Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Trinity's Saturday evening worship service. And to those of you worshiping with us online, welcome, and uh, we're glad you're here as well. Uh, do we have any announcements? Here we go. Uh, Trinity no longer requires masks and distancing during worship. Uh, however, we have set aside two areas for those who would feel more comfortable being masked and or distanced during worship. And that is the uh, northeast and northwest wings of the sanctuary. So if you're seated in a pew and you would like to be kind of off by yourself, those two areas are available for you. Uh, we are currently wrapping up our annual stewardship drive. And we thank you for your generous pledge responses. And I really mean that. We got very good response this year to our request for pledges. It's enabled us to prepare the annual budget that will be presented at tomorrow's voters meeting. So again, thank you all for your contributions. Uh, we ask you also to join us tomorrow for our Congregational Voters Meeting at 11.30 in person here in the sanctuary. We have two big items on the agenda. One is uh, approving our budget for fiscal year 21-22, and the other is elections to leadership council and uh, elder ministry team positions. Uh, also, uh, we are uh, if you look down in the appeal, you'll see the blue cards are back. We would ask you during, uh, at some point during the service to please uh, fill one out and drop it in uh, one of the collection plates at the two uh, exits from the church. Uh, it really helps us keep track of not so much people who are here, but if somebody isn't here and is having a problem, uh, so that we can uh, maybe reach out if we need to. Okay, we also have uh, several ongoing Bible study and support groups, and we'd love everyone to participate in something that is just right for you. And you can find a full listing in the Trinity Weekly or on Trinity's website. And again, if you are not getting the Trinity Weekly by email or uh, phone tree, uh, we ask you to... Uh, uh, and you'd like to, please uh, drop us a line at tlc at trinitydowntown.com. Give us your contact information, either phone number or uh, an email address, and we'll make sure that you're plugged in. And that's all I have this evening, Pastor. Good evening, Trinity. Welcome. I hope all of you uh, enjoyed seeing some of the uh, spots around the church. If you were looking, you'll notice that there's been a bit of a difference in the front and the side. And if you go up by the CDC, JC, you'll be able to see some work that was done up there also by the CDC. So our, our landscaping project got really good and going today. So we're thankful for all those hands that were used to help that happen. And uh, so we'll be meeting again in a couple weeks. And at that point, uh, we'll actually be starting to do some of the planting and uh, getting everything ready to be planted. So uh, phase one of uh, three weeks um, has occurred. So we're very thankful. And I would just like to have you please stand at this point and uh, Make sure and give yourself a second. If you want to reach out and touch somebody's hand, that's fine today. Go ahead and do that. And also wave to the cameras so we can welcome anybody watching by way of online. God's blessings. Welcome to Trinity. Take a second. Beginning this evening, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins before God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake. He forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word and of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Send us your spirit. Send us your spirit in this place. Send us your spirit in this place. Send us your spirit in this place. Have your way. Fill us with mercy. Fill us with mercy. Come on and bless, we sing. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor and blessing and glory are his come on and bless the lord with me 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 sing with all the people of god and join in the hymn of all creation blessing honor glory and might God and the Lamb forever, amen. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 One more time, a little higher now. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. The Lord with me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, during his earthly ministry, your Son healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of the Word and sacraments, pour into our hearts such love toward you that we may live eternally through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight's Old Testament readings is from Lamentations, chapter 3, beginning with the 22nd verse. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will uh, hope to him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he beat the yoke in his, bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. When I am a wasteland, you are the water. When I am the winter, you are the fire that burns. When I am a long night, you are the sunrise. When I am a desert,
Tonight's epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning with the first verse. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, so should he complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in, your, in, in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. We stand to greet the gospel as we sing. Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. This text will serve as the basis for tonight's meditation. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and he saw him, and he fell at his feet, and he implored Jesus earnestly, saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better. But then, rather, she had grown worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she had said, if I touch even his garment, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him immediately turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of this disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John. And he saw the brother, they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And Jesus saw a commotion of people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he entered in, he said to them, Why are you making such a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but is sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother 
and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kume, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age, and they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you may be seated. We sing us chant today as our hymn. I invite you to listen as I sing it first. Jesus, heal us, Jesus. Jesus, heal us now. We sing together. and peace be richly and abundantly poured out upon each of you this very day. Our text is taken from the Mark 5 Gospel lesson, and I invite you to uh, once again remember those words that were just shared with you. Mark's Gospel, um, just in general, points out to us that Jesus is coming and that with him he is ushering in the kingdom of God and God's reign upon the earth. For those of you and for those in our society that really believe that God has somehow created the heavens and the earth and then has just kind of stepped back from it and is not a player or a part of our world or our life, this is not the message of the day. Jesus is a part of our world. 
Jesus is a part of our world and our life and our day-to-day personal life. In fact, we will see this in the life of at least two different individuals in this text. The kingdom of heaven is upon us. The reign of Christ is at hand and is occurring. Jesus speaks to this in the life of the uh, uh, Jairus, the commander of the ruler of the, uh, um, our, the synagogue, and of the woman who had the hemorrhaging. And in today's lesson, we learn the reign of God is definitely upon us in these two lives, and hopefully you see that in yours as well. And along with last week's gospel, we ask that question. Who is this, this Jesus? Often I come across people who don't see the involvement of God in their world or their life. Personally, I don't see how they can see it or don't see it, how they're somehow blind to it. Today's text tells us again just how Jesus himself is engaged and involved in our world and life and that he cares. He cares for you and for me. As I look around with eyes wide open, I see the fingerprints of God all over my life and all over my world and yours. And I see his blessings and abundance of those firsthand. As I think of the prayers that have been answered, As I think of his divine deliverance, providence, and protection over the past 14 to 15 months and 64 years for me, God has been with me. And I see that my Redeemer reigns in my life and in my world. And I hope and I pray that you do too. This past year of COVID, I certainly see that each of us who, who are here this evening are still breathing. We can see that God's hand of deliverance was upon us and was with us. If you have a job, if you have a home, if you have a family or a church to worship in, these are all blessings from the Almighty who's involved in your life and world. Look around and see. Do you see? Do you see the work of God in your life? Think about that question. And begin to answer it in your own life. How do I see God at work in my life? God provided and protected Trinity Lutheran Church during these past 16 months. Many churches closed, not only during COVID, but perhaps even forever. Their doors for the last time. Some are just reopening. One on Conway Road I saw coming up. They were proud to say and pleased to say, as I was for them, that they were going to have in-person worship again. Our attendance is growing and towards that pre-COVID number, but we still haven't arrived. Our Sunday school is about to reopen in child care in August. We are seeking a child care worker for our Sunday services and all of those things. We are now preparing to resume because of the blessing and grace of God. God has given us many answers to many prayers, including new music director, choir master, and we start to see those blessings, and they came at such a time as this. Our CDC is preparing for 300 students this next fall. We pray for that, but we also pray for teachers because they're harder and harder to come by, especially with the unemployment the way it is. How many of you noticed the new landscaping that, uh, or the old landscaping that's gone, I should probably say. How many of you just noticed that? It was just kind of, it's we're ready to go. The dirt's up, the plants are out, and now we're about ready to, the next time we meet, be able to start planting some new bushes and plants and flowers. All of this, is because of various people that God used as vessels and vehicles for us to be able to enjoy and to have blessings from the Almighty. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was beside the sea, our text tells us. 
You can see a picture of Jesus zigzagging across the sea that the crowds would gather and follow Jesus. And upon hearing him, they, someone would spot him. They would say he's sailing to the other side. And some would even join in a boat, we found out last week, trying to have some kind of a, a connection with this Christ, to see Jesus, to hear him, to have him heal or help them in some sort of way. They understood Jesus was in their life, was in their world, was in their town. So it was with Jairus, a prominent official in the Jewish synagogue. And Jesus, upon hearing that he was there, he ran to Jesus and he fell at Jesus' feet. And he said, Lord, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on him or upon her, so that you may heal her and she may live. And Jesus went with him. Now Jesus had healed other people. Some he had touched, others he had not. But this man had heard of and seen that Jesus had touched other people, and so he felt like that was the medium that had had to occur. This man was begging, you might say, for his daughter's life. He wasn't concerned with what other people would think about such a prominent man prostrating himself before this preacher, Jesus. In this humble posture, he knelt before the feet of Jesus and he asked for help. I think you and I have been there. We just want to cry out to God and say, help me. I don't have any other solutions, no other place to turn. Help me. That's where Jairus was. And a great crowd followed Jesus and thronged about him as Jairus and Jesus and his disciples were going towards Jairus' home to where the little girl was. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians, we read in tonight's text. And she'd spent all that she had. Her resources were gone. And she was worse off than before. Here we see the popularity of Jesus and the crowds that would gather him, around him, wherever he would show up. But I'm here thinking also not of the masses, but of the one. The one who had it in her heart to say, if I just would touch his garment of his robe, I can be healed of this. She'd heard the reports of what Jesus had done on other people in other places. She'd been hemorrhaging for 12 long years. And she'd spent all she had. And according to Levitical law, she was unclean, so she was also isolated. And if we've gone through COVID, we know what it's like to be isolated. But it was even worse for her. This was an embarrassment. This was something you didn't talk about. This was something that she was an untouchable, an outcast. Now, she had heard reports about this Jesus and she schemed in her mind with a plan to come up behind him and to be able to somehow reach out and to touch him. Maybe even if it's just the tassel on his robe. She said, I'll then be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up when she touched that hem on that robe and she was healed of her disease. And the text tells us that Jesus perceived that the power had gone out from him, that something had happened. Now I want you to know this didn't leave Jesus without any power or limited in what he could do or less than God because of this miracle that had just occurred. No, Jesus wanted to meet and see not the masses that had gathered but the one, the one who had believed who he had just healed. Sometimes people feel like 
I know Jesus came to die for the whole world. But my friends, tonight I see a Jesus that cared so much for this one that even though he is surrounded by the many, the masses, it was the one, the one who had come in so much faith, believing, if I just touch, he'll heal me. And that's what happened. And the disciples kind of said to Jesus, don't you see the crowds? How are we going to tell who did this? But Jesus asked the question, who touched me? Jesus wanted to meet the one who had sought him out. And he looked around to see who had done it. And the woman, knowing what had happened, probably being somewhat fearful of what Jesus was going to do, what he was going to say, she told him the whole story as she knelt before him, trembling. I love what Jesus does here. He says, daughter, your faith, your trust, your belief in me has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Sometimes we're scared to approach God. And I want you to know that here in this story we see a, a Savior who is so approachable and who is engaged and in, involved in our world and in our life so much so that he doesn't look at just all the masses and just say, oh, bless you. He looks for the one. He looks for you, and he looks for you, and he looks for me. You too, Howard. And when we start to see all that, we see God's hand is at work in our world, and in our life. Powerfully, Christ again point, paints a picture of his place in the kingdom of God. He and Jairus continue on in their journey, and it's somewhere on that road towards Jairus' home that one of his other servants reports to Jairus, the news. Your daughter has died. Your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher. It's no use. There's nothing he can do. But overhearing this, listen to what our Lord does. He overheard what they had told Jairus, and Jesus says to Jairus, Do not fear, only believe. Jesus didn't want this news of his daughter's death to stop Jairus on this journey called faith. He wanted Jairus to come and to believe in him as the Lord and Savior, the Messiah that was sent by God himself. Jesus was saying to Jairus, don't give up. Don't give way to your fear. Believe. Jairus, he was saying, let not fear take control of your heart. Believe. He was saying to Jairus, go on with me to your daughter's home, to your home, and be believing. It would be very important difficult for us to imagine the conflict that must have been going on inside of Jairus' heart at this time. Locked between two worlds, one of fear and the other of faith. Believing this Jesus can heal, but his daughter had died. Jesus was there again in command of the situation. And upon approaching the disciples' that he had in his group, he says to Peter, James, and John, Peter, James, and John, you're coming with me. They went to Jairus' home. There were, they're meted, or they were greeted by mourners and weepers that had already gathered with the news that the daughter had died. Jesus told them, why are you making the commotion and weeping? He spoke to the mourners. The child is not dead, but is sleeping. This is what the world often does. 
as they did that day. They laughed at Jesus. But Jesus put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and spent and went in, excuse me, with where the child was. The world may laugh at our God or our faith and our trust when it appears as though there's no hope. But my friends, Jesus wants you to continue the journey called faith and belief as he did with Jairus. Do not fear, only believe, is what Jesus told Jairus. Why are you making such a commotion, he said to the crowd. Child's not dead, she's only sleeping. Do we not know that Jesus has already conquered sin and death and the devil and the grave? Do we not know that Jesus was able to lift Lazarus from death and the grave to life? Do we not know that the Easter tomb was empty? Jesus has truly, my friends, conquered death and the grave. And with him we have the victory also. He is the resurrection and the life. And all who believe in him will not perish. I had to stop when I was writing this message and say, Doug, don't give way to fear. Believe. Trust in God. The things of church, the things of my life, of my family, my future. Believe. And taking this little girl by the hand, Jesus says, Talitha kumi. That means, little girl, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk. Can't you just see that? Some girl about 12 years old getting up and going around with her business, probably having a little skip in her step. And can you imagine as a mother and a father what that must have been like? When the world had given up on her thinking she was dead. But Jesus said, not today. I'm here. Do not be in fear. Believe. Jesus says to you and to me, I'm the resurrection and the life. Jesus stands with us, encouraging us to go on with him, believing in our journey of faith, like with Jairus and just like the woman. Do not fear. Believe. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them from all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by the second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, of life, of salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Amen. Lord and Savior Jesus, we ask that you would be with your church, Trinity Lutheran Church, tomorrow as we approach the voters meeting, passing of a budget, election of officer, and the news and announcements of your grace and mercy that you have extended to us. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the people of Miami who are suffering loss following the condo collapse. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with families that have uh, suffered this loss, that you would also be with the people who uh, are still being sought for. If they're still alive, Lord, may you graciously lead these uh, workers to find them. We pray for your protection over them and over their lives. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would bring healing to this terrible situation and bring help and comfort to the people involved. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we also pray for Fort Trinity, Fort, Trinity Lutheran Church, Fort Lauderdale, after the falling of their, after the death of their pastor, an interim pastor. We thank you for peace's ministry and for those who were the handlers that attended to her. And we ask you, O oh Lord, that the seeds of blessings that they sowed will bring forth blessings in the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the people who are across the street who will be moving in soon. May you give us eyes of faith and a willingness to speak and to share and to share the great love of your church and of your people and the love that you have extended to all of us, including them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the work and ministry of this congregation and school and ask, Lord, your blessing to be upon us and to allow us to fulfill the, the ministry and mission that you have set before us and to be eager to have those who will be involved to be able to serve with many hands and with many leaders. And we ask your blessing upon our work and may we joyously do it and may it be fruitful. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for sending Richard Matthews home following a heart transplant. We thank you for being with Bonnie Hahn and ask your continued blessings to be with her and her caregiver and Bruce and her husband. And also that you would be with uh, Bud Puck, Gary Bowles and their continued progress and their medical treatments. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we extend all these and all the prayers that have been not spoken this day into your, your grace and your mercy and ask your blessing upon all of us. To your glory we pray it. Amen. We now pray that prayer which you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, he gave thanks. And he gave it unto his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given unto death for you. Likewise, in the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had supped, he gave thanks, and he gave it unto his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, given and shed for you for the remission of all your sins. As often as you drink this, do it in the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve in you, in body and soul, to life everlasting, depart in peace. Amen. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. and serve the Lord with joy.